pay for God to start. Always seen before I had to make a provision for us, Lord. Yeah, always. Always. Lord, just thank you for just always. always being there in our corner, being in our back, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, just as you know, we struggle, Lord, at times, Lord, you've always been faithful to us, Lord. You've never let us down, Lord. Even though we may fail, Lord, and fall. You've always just been there to pick us up. Yes. And always been there to just guide us along the way, Lord. Yes. And even as you put things in our path to help us to, to get along the way, Lord. We thank you for just, you know, always knowing what's best for us, Lord, even when at times when we don't know. So I pray that we we're very sensitive to the Holy Spirit, Lord. Even when you're talking to us, Lord, about things and you're working in our hearts, Lord, I pray that we become even more sensitive, Lord, as in what you want us to do, what you want us to say, you know, even in us going through things that may seem very hard and may, we may be struggling, Lord, it is you working in our lives, Lord, to refine us, to make us in your image, even, Lord, even in the sanctification process, Lord. Lord, just, we love you, Lord, for everything you've done, Lord, and even at times, Lord, we feel, Lord, just thank you for being who we are. As as we're preparing to do the Lord's Supper, I'm just gonna share a little bit about. I know a lot of times um, we do stuff in church and we don't really fully grasp the concept of why we do what we do. I think as we grasp the concept of it, um, we we learn to appreciate it even more. So I'm just going to share a little bit about um, why we do the Lord's Supper. Uh, we do it actually, it's taken in two set of scriptures, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 32, and Matthew 26 to 20, Matthew 26, 26 to 28. When we do the Lord's Supper, we actually do it in remember, remembering and observing. Uh, we observe and participate in the Lord's Supper. It is a symbol of cleansing, consecration, and communion. When we say cleansing, um, God requires a blood sacrifice to cover our transgression. That's christening for sin, pretty much. Um, as you can see in Genesis 3, 21, and Leviticus 17, 11. Uh, in the Old Testament, they require animal sacrifice. So every time we committed a sin, we had to sacrifice an animal. And when Jesus came and died for sin, he's the one ultimate sacrifice. Yes. You know, he covered the past, the present, and future sins that we, that we may commit. Also, with the body, where we take participate of taking the bread, is his body being broken. In his brokenness, our body is made whole. Okay. Consecration means separate, set apart. As Christians, we're set apart from the world. You know, we're because of God dying on the cross for our sins. We're above sin. He gave us He gave us victory over the power of death and over sin. And communion, being not only united with Christ, but being united as a body. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Together. So, for I received from the Lord what I have passed unto you. The Lord, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he took the cup, saying, This is the cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink, in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning on God against the body and the blood of the Lord. As men ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. For any who eats the bread and drinks the cup without recognition, recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment unto himself. This is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. So as we're preparing, just take a time to just, you know, get things right before God. A lot of times I come in, just rush in the church, and just do the ritual stuff. And we sometimes forget that, you know, God is a holy God, and, you know, he's supreme. So just take a minute to just, you know, if there's anything that God's pulling on your heart, just get it right before God. Um, and then go from there.
While they're eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Thank you, Jesus. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offering to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Yes. Lord, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to just commune with you, Lord, not only just with you in, in your death and your dying sins, Lord, but also just we just are as a family, Lord, Lord. Just thank you for just the opportunity, Lord, to just, you know, continue to worship you as, you know, uh, we're going to be participating in offering and using the word, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daniel. Coastal. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. Welcome to December. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. December. The, the end of 2016 is approaching fast. Are there any new uh, new people here? First time today? Show of hands. Welcome. Thank you for coming. A round of applause. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's um, nice. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, giving us this opportunity. Um, if you, uh, you, Rod always says, give us three chances because you may not like how I sound. Uh, I'm not always up here. <laughs> So come back again and keep trying this out. But, uh, Excuse me, November's over. Yes, November is over, as you pointed out, and I will continue to grow this beard until my wife shaves it off. The rest of the <laughs> <laughs> so for those who, uh, <laughs> I told her, I was like, you know, when you're married, you don't, you don't have any, like, you don't have to really worry about your self-image too much. So she said she'll shave one patch, and I said, I'll wear it to the family photos. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But it's good, it's good to have everyone here, and uh, we hope that you have a good time today. Um, and for those who are counting, it's 21 days until Christmas, wow. so uh, it's yo, yo. around the corner. And, uh, and so just real quick, um, I, was, I was talking to, uh, to a few people this weekend, and, and Chelsea was one of them, and we were talking about how everyone gets all in the hustle and bustle of Christmas, and, and how uh, we start to put this emphasis on getting gifts and presents, and then a lot of people, we were talking about Santa, and how people you know, think Santa's really generous, but let me tell you about how generous the king is. In Ephesians it says, Now to him, by in consequence of his action of power, as in work within us, is able to carry out his purposes and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare to ask or think, infinitely beyond the, our highest prayers, yeah. desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Yeah. So whatever you think you put on your Christmas list, <laughs> just remember that God's Christmas list for you is over and abundant what you could possibly even think to put on that list. Yeah. And so as we, as we think about that, just remember um, how much God has done for us and that we're here today just because simply the glory of God and his, his mercy. Uh, and so let me call the ushers up. We're going to prepare to take offering. Um, and remember, as, as we give, you know, we're, the, the Bible tells us to give. God commands us to give. But we give out of, out of the abundance that God already gave to us. So in that exceeding abundantly abundance that you have that God has given you, that's what we give out of. And so, Father, I thank you for this offering. Yeah. I thank you for this year you've given us. And I know that this, this last month of this year is going to be the most prosperous for everyone in here. And Father, I pray that as we turn the corner into a new year, Father, that, that we start to prepare our hearts, not just making the mark of a new year, but we make a mark of new people. Father, that we go into 2017 truly with a new heart on fire for you. In your name we pray, Father. Go ahead.
Well, I'm glad everyone's here. It's good to be here with you today. And so, uh, if you didn't notice, the announcements are up on the screen. Uh, I believe Coastal Kids has already been released uh, for the, the, the kiddies to go up. Um, so I'm going to call Rod up. Uh, he's going to minister to us today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Morning, Coastal. Good morning. Hallelujah. Do you want to pray for me, brother? Yes, sir, I do. It'd be nice to get a prayer. <laughs> pray from my boy. Hallelujah. Father God, we're so grateful for this day you've given us, Lord. And I pray that uh, as we enter this, this last month in 2016, yeah. we're entering a, a new series here, Father, that you just, your words flow through, Rod, Father. We know that there's no power in human words, but there is so much power in your words. And Father, as Rod speaks, let, let your words flow through him. And Father, also on the receiving end, Lord, let our hearts be open to receive. That your words cut into us sharper than any two-edged sword, Father, and they sit into our hearts, Father, and that we're not just here to just go through the motions of church, but we're here to grow as a family. And so, Father, I pray that you, you give Rod your words to speak today. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, Coastal, it's great to be into December. A rundown, countdown to Christmas. Um, the whole shopping spree and all that stuff doesn't really grab me. Just to tell you that for free. Um, just also mention that Ben is recovering from, uh, he had a cataract operation, and so he's, uh, it was quite a, uh, he, ha he has very challenging eyes. Uh, not normal and in a scarring process and all that stuff. So um, he has to stay away from any potential of infection. So he um, had it, uh, it was successful. So we're uh, grateful that, uh, that he can get, you, you can't believe how blurry his vision is, but he's such a, he's, 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 he carries himself so confidently and I'm so, so blessed at his posture towards not being pressed down in any way by the enemy hallelujah so coastal it is uh, december and uh, we are launching a christmas message today uh, for the series of this, uh, the weekends in december i'm looking forward to that but i really just want to make mention that um not this sunday coming the following sunday the 18th we're going to have our, our christmas lunch together that's the sunday before christmas so we require you to sign up and there's designated um, sides that we've asked you to bring and so just get your names down there we really appreciate that obviously um, we we handed out our bulletins last week and this this month we are um, our, our, our ministry feature is Lynn Lynn Swat is uh, the New Day ministry and uh, you may have seen her card up there wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, she is um, wanting to just say thank you next week we have a video clip just uh, she has a message for us so we just want to just bring it before you and uh, allow us to be mindful for that. And so also the connect groups are, are, have been, been combined and here, and we got uh, the 7th and the 14th. So they're going to be the last two combined connect groups, and then we're going to go, be going back to our connect groups in our homes. So that'll be into January, so we'll communicate more about that. We also want Coastal, if you could uh, be mindful, we want to be help some families that are struggling. And I thought the best way to do that is if, while you're out shopping, you know these displays with all these different gift cards, just buy a gift card, whether it be a $5 or a $10 or a $1,000 gift card, just <laughs> grab it. And just, uh, if we find a gift card in the offering, we'll presume it's uh, that you placed it there so that we can give it to a needy family and, uh, and help them. So obviously, it'll be nice to have a Walmart or a Target so that there is groceries and gifts that they can get. So we would we'd appreciate that. So we wanna just help some families, uh, not only in our family, but also in the, in the area and just be a blessing to the people. So I thought that was a good way, instead of bringing stuff here, just bring gift cards and then we can get the gift cards out. Um, also a fuel gift card would be good. Some yeah. people may be able to go to their loved ones uh, because they got, got fuel there. Men, I'm gonna be sending all the men an email <laughs> And also the wives, so that the wives can tell the men, the husbands, <laughs> those that, are, that have partners, that we have a men's, uh, it's called Man Up um, um, Gathering that's happening. And it's all the men in this area of Flagler County are coming together in the different churches. And we're going to be at Palm, uh, uh, Palm Coast Community Church. And we have a guest speaker. They try to get the one with the Black Hawk Down uh, gentleman, but he, he's not available. So we have Keith Towers, an NBA uh, Magic's player, and uh, he is now a pastor, uh, doing incredible work in in the lives of all the sports, and he, he pastors a church in Orlando, and so he's come to just, it's an evening together, it's a Friday evening, $20 for a meal, good meal, and uh, 
a great time where the men gather. So I just want to tell you to, to sign up. You have to go online. Instead of putting lists here, we're going to ask you to go online, click, and just uh, sign up. Last year, we had a great time with the head of FedEx. Um, um, the, and so we, we've got that happening this this. Next, uh, next Saturday, we have a, a prayer and intercession evening happening here. Lynch, uh, Lynch came and uh, was, is an intercessor for Church of the Nations and uh, really felt that God wanted us to uh, have her come and pray. And um, I try to put her off to March next year. She says, no, Rod, I really feel that the window of opportunity to create an open heaven over you as a church needed to happen. So that was a couple of weeks back. And, and um, she said we needed to continue to pray into this and allow a portal of open heaven to be upon us. Amazing stuff happens when there's an open heaven. Mm -hmm. over. You see Korea where there's over 10,000 people praying at any one time in, in South Korea, in Seoul, Korea, with Yonggi Cho's church of 750,000. Um, there is an open heaven. Where did that open? Where, where is the residue? Where did that come from, that revival, that, that, that incredible growth? It was from the, from, uh, uh, it, it was from the Azusa street revival that happened in california um that same people picked it up people came picked up that mantle and went back with it and <coughs> yongi cho is known as the apostle of prayer had kept that window open heaven and so we really want an open heaven over flagler county don't we i want people driving on 95 when they're going past to realize man there is something different here um that I, i've just seen in my mind's eye lear jets landing and people coming in to touch the presence of god that's going to be here and I want us to posture ourselves in faith towards that. And uh, that's just kind of, I don't know, it was not in my notes, but I thought I'd just let you know. But uh, we, we, we had this intercessory prayer, so I really wanted to do, uh, just to men make mention of that. So hallelujah. So I'm ready to preach. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to, to um, uh, allow God's word to minister as we start our series, the series on peace on earth? Kind of sense it was an apt message in a series after this uh, turbulent election that we had um, that we should have peace on earth <laughs> it'll be good and uh, so we, we I want you to just look at two uh, I want you to just have a reference to two scriptures Zion 9 and John 14 the gospel of John John 14 and I'm gonna be ministering on this in the next four uh, four Sundays and the fourth Sunday is going to be Christmas Day we're gonna have a short uh, service so that everybody could get back to open their gifts and so and it will be at nine o'clock not ten o'clock nine in and ten out so if you have if you open presents you're gonna have to open them early get here or if not don't worry i'll be quick and we will open presents afterwards if you were in Val, val's home in her day you'd have to wait for the queen to pre, uh, to have her speech which always happened in midday that, that is painful for any child and I wasn't a child and it was painful for me. <laughs> hey, mom, are you coming with baby? Yay. Congratulations. How's the little boy doing? He's good. Is it? Wow, hey. Daddy, where's your mom? So I tell you what, eh? <laughs> Multiplying the church one way or another. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so I'm going to minister on, on, uh, on, on peace on earth and... Uh, as we, as we look at that, I just really sense that um, we need to look at where, where the source of peace comes from. And, um, and we live in a, in a place, uh, in a world that really needs a whole lot more peace happening. Um, we have Steve in our midst here who is ministering over in the, in the, in the refugee situation. That, and uh, says that the Holy Spirit is doing incredible things there. And uh, we, we need to understand that uh, that is happening. And... Uh, in all this this conflict and all this war and all these uh, different tensions that are happening in different places, even locally, in in families, I uh, can't believe the different tensions that have risen from from these elections and stuff, and all the tension that's happening and the animosity, and so God is really wanting to declare peace to us and announce peace to us over this season, as we we, we look at it. So, um, and I'm sure you know that there there is room for more peace. A whole lot more room for more peace. And uh, as a pastor, I really come across people that have peace. Walking peace. There's only one person I really know is, uh, that does that is Carol Cape. <coughs> yeah. Carol Cape is nicknamed Walking Peace. It's kind of nothing rattles her. I mean, they are like got 
Five minutes before the door's about to close and the plane's about to fly, she now walks off gradually to Starbucks because she's got to have her latte. <laughs> and David says, there's your boarding pass. I'm getting on there. And if you miss it, God bless you. And by the time she gets there, she walks in and everybody's in final, final seat belts and she grabs her latte and sits down and he says, you see, I mean, she's just walking peace. And so, um, and so, um, so as, 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 as we enter this time of celebration, Christmas, it's, it's um, as believers, we really got to just look at uh, the peace that was bought by Jesus Christ to us. And today I want to talk about the gift of peace, the gift of peace. And this peace was announced 700 years before the very first Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that was 2,716 years from today. It was announced by the uh, prophet Isaiah, predicting <laughs> that the Savior of the world would come and he would be called the Prince of Peace. Let me read the scripture, Isaiah 9, 16. It says, For uh, a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace talks of a, a, an author of peace, a source of peace, and, uh, and had, was, 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 was predicted to be sent and has now come. And so here we are with uh, the prophet's announcement and, and uh, the prediction, and it has happened. Not only that, on the very first Christmas, there's the, the, the shepherds were looking after their sheep. And a, a, an angel appeared and announced that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. And when that announcement was made, a host of angels came and it and it's sang these words in, in, in Luke 2, 14. It says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom He is pleased. They announced uh, to the angels, the angels announced to the shepherds. Now the shepherds were the, 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 the if we can equate it for a Flagler Beach people, it's the surfers, like the surfers. They kind of just chill, hang out. There's just no, there's no sweat. They just wait for the waves to come. They're kind of those kind of guys. That, and suddenly they get this announcement and it talks about peace on earth amongst those whom he, he is pleased. And I want to say those that posture themselves, that turn their hearts to Christ, he is pleased with you. And hence peace is towards you. So one of the, uh, and one of the core fruits coming out of Christianity should be peace. <laughs> but I tell you what, it's, 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 it's found wanting in the Christian life. So today I want to look at three kinds of peace that came that, came that first Christmas um, um, when, when Jesus came. And let's allow the Word of God this morning to locate us. Let it also to come and correct us. And let it also direct us this morning. Allow the Word of God to do that. Because the Word is very good in finding out where we are. Yeah. And it's good to find out where you're at. So when you are found on the map, you know that you have directions to get on out of that. The Bible talks in, in 790 verses, um, there, are, there are talks about peace in the Bible. And so the three kinds of peace that, that we want to look at this morning is spiritual peace, which is your eternal peace, emotional peace, which is your internal peace, and relational peace, which is your external peace. Let's unpack it, let's measure it, and let's see how peace is doing in our lives. And let's see if we need to be adjusted by Holy Spirit. The first one I want to talk to you is peace with God. This peace is spiritual peace. It is eternal peace. The most important, uh, and it affects everything. I know that when I'm out of whack with my wife, or we're out of whack with our family, or, or friends, and it, it brings pain and, 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 and no peace. But I want to... Out of whack. Do you understand that, what that word is? Yeah. Out of whack. It's not a South African or a British something. It's out of whack. It's universal. Okay. But when you're out of whack with God, woo -hoo, yeah. there's a real lack of peace. And I want to say that was the one of the key things when I was growing up. And my, my sister-in-law, God bless her. I think, I don't know if the devil sent her or God sent her. But boy, she, she gave me the fear, the fear of God. Telling me that I was going to go to hell. And um, she was right, you know, because I was a little terrorist. And, but, you know, and I had this, I had this torment. What do I do? Because I was told about sin. And I said, I need to sort it out with God. Because if He appeared tomorrow, I'm in trouble. In fact, if He appeared tonight or today, I'm in trouble. That was my conversation. And I couldn't, and until I went to that, 
that, that, uh, that service at that school one day, and the man told me that Jesus had paid, my, paid the price for my sin. Only then, only then when I responded to the call of salvation, did peace come. Before then, I had no peace. I was lacking peace. I was struggling with, with this peace issue. And so here we have this, uh, this uh, good news about peace has come. And so it's important that we, uh, we, we, we look at it. Because 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, God has done it all. He sent Christ to make peace between Himself and us. We couldn't make peace. We were inadequate in making peace because of, our, of, the, of the sin that separated us. But now God says, I have sorted it out. I sent Christ to make peace between Himself and us. And that's good news for us today. This is good news for us as we approach this time where we celebrate. Why do I need to be right with God? I'll tell you why. Because if I go my way, live my way, do my own thing, and if I'm the God of my own way, my own world, my own way, my own works, I want to tell you there is no peace. You can, tell, you can ask a billionaire. You can ask all those people that have the right to do everything they want. They don't have this peace that God talks about. They don't have this peace that we as believers understand. When you're right with God, which is the thing we're talking about, peace with God, there is nothing like it. No money can buy it. No, no behavioral patterns are going to change that to bring that peace. But we understand that we have this peace. And, the, and this, this attitude of, of doing it my way, this is such pride. This is sin. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's out of step with Father. And when you're out of step with Father, there is no peace. Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but the end leads to death. Our design is to, be, to walk with God. And when we're out of step with God, I tell you what, peace is not there. Ask me, I walked 18 years without it. I understand that there is no peace there. And when, our, when we disobey or we fight with God or disobey God or ignore God or live in this rebellion or, or, uh, and revolt, um, if we distance ourselves from God, there is no peace. I want to tell you that there is no peace. Romans 5, 1 says this, and it's good news. Good news, because we need peace with God. It says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us and that is the joy that we have because before Christ BC I had access to peace denied I had no access to this peace because I was separated from God I had no peace so this this Christmas that's the, this very first Christmas Jesus came um, on a rescue mission sent by the father he was on a peace mission for us and that's good news for us and i said i want to just say that peace with god is did not come by what we did but what christ did on the cross so we can't take any accolades for this and it's not our behavior that does that that brings brings peace it's our belief that brings peace you need to be clear with that you cannot uh, expect to have this because I'm doing this and because I'm doing that and I'm doing the next thing that I'm going to get peace no it says here because I believe in the one who came and got me peace Jesus Christ that's what brings me peace for all who believe in Christ we have peace with God because we have received this peace we've received it and that brought peace with us a little further down on Romans 5 Romans 10 says even when we were God's enemies he made peace with us. He took the initiative because His Son died for us. Now that we are at peace with God, we will be saved by His Son's life. Good stuff, the Scripture. It tells us that because of what Jesus did, we have access to this peace with God. And it's important that we have, because that's, that's what that brings that spiritual peace, that brings us that eternal peace that we're talking about today. Most religions, you have to bring some kind of peace offering. 
I mean, you have a look at some of the, 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 the animus belief in the East. They, I mean, they're bringing their best fruit and they're bringing, and it never can appease the gods. Mm -hmm. Never in all the other religions. But with Christ, we don't. We come as we are because Christ has already paid yeah. the offering. He's paid for it and, it, and, and He has appeased Almighty God by sacrificing His life. Jesus picked up the tab on our sin and He purchased our righteousness. Wow, it's good news for us this, this Christmas. Peace with God comes through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The second kind of peace I want to talk to you about. I only got three kinds of peace I want to talk to you about. The second kind of peace I want to talk to you about is peace of God. The peace of God. Peace within. Internal peace. Emotional peace. Man, if we can get this right, man, psychologists and psychiatrists will be out of business. <laughs> Amen. Because I tell you what, that's what it is. They're trying to find the source of peace in their life. And they go and sit on that little sofa there and talk their hearts away. No, they need to have Jesus on board. That's what they need. Amen. Amen. The peace of God only comes when we have peace with God. So there's an order. When I get peace vertically with God, then there is an internal peace that comes. But there is a, there's a reason why that happens. And that's this piece that comes internally, man, you can't put words to it. But man, it's a feel-good, gut-happy piece that comes. And that comes when salvation comes to your life. First Thessalonians 5, 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. It goes on to say, sanctify you in your spirit, in your soul, and your body. God wants you peace in your spirit. He wants peace in your soul. He wants peace in your body. He doesn't. I'm telling you what, as a loving father, I, Val says, we're as happy as our, our, our what's that? As our, as our, unhappiest child. As, as our unhappiest child. <laughs> and you know, the father wants us to be happy. He's, he said, I sent my son to purchase peace for you guys. And he wants us to walk in it. And so Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. It says here, Notice, in your heart, it's talking about inside, internal, emotional. It's important that we see that. The peace, the word peace in Hebrew is called shalom. Wow. If you unpack that word shalom, it's just, it's just not just, just you know, peace. You know, end of hostility. Man, it means well-being. It means happiness. It means harmony. It means sincerity. Uh, uh, there is peace, in every, for, peace for every one of your problems. You know, when there's 790 verses around the word peace, you know that you can find peace for every circumstance you find yourself. When you have broken hearted, you have comforting peace. When you're confused in heart, you have guiding peace. When you have shame in your heart, you get forgiving peace. And when you have an anxious heart, you get confidence peace. So by the scripture says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let it. We can, we can shun it and we can hold it away. And God says, let the peace of God, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Because I tell you, I was, I was talking to, to Wolfgang uh, and those who know him. Uh, we, we, we popped out there this evening and he says, you know, we, we're talking in the driveway. And he says, we've got to, you know, we've walked this many years with God. He says, but I've still got to grab myself by the bootstraps and speak these things into my life. I can't just think, and because if I just back off, if we switch the lights off, darkness is going to come, just come yeah. pouncing into this room. And so when we kind of back off, we're going to have this onslaught. And so peace leaves. The peace of God is the, is, is the person of God that's residing, that comes inside you. Now this is key. This is why we have peace. Uh, uh, we have this, the, the peace of uh, um peace of God is because the Holy Spirit comes on board you know when you are when you give your life to Christ the Spirit of God comes and takes resi residence in you and that's why we have the resource to talk about peace because we have peace uh, with God we have peace God with God and we have the peace of God and so when Jesus last week I spoke to you that Jesus had a very very tough conversation, a very weighty conversation over through John's 14, 15, 16. He was talking about his going. He's talking about Judas. He was talking about the Peter denying. But he spoke about Holy Spirit. 
And he spoke about the, the, this scripture here, which is your other text, John 14, uh, 26 through 27. He says, but the helper, he's talking about, man, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to leave you something that will affect your peace. And it says this, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The next verse, it, it follows straight on. Peace I leave with you. Talking about Holy Spirit. I'm not going to just head out. I'm going to leave peace with you. I'm going to leave Holy Spirit with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I tell you what. It, he's encouraging us not to have lack of peace. Because on board we have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to be the, 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 the peace that, that, that's in, in our lives. God says, if you have my peace, peace with me, and you receive a peace, P-I-E-C-E, a peace of me, a Holy Spirit in me, hallelujah, He brings that peace. You've got to understand, uh, when you're in the turmoil there, stop and say, go in and say, Holy Spirit, how do I deal with this? How do I look at this? What do I say to this, Holy Spirit? And the peace of God will start rising up if you would let it rule in your heart we've got to remember that the fruits of the spirit that galatians 5 22 talked about that's big s spirit there is a fruit that develops and comes out of allowing holy spirit to be in your life allowing holy spirit to flow through your life there is a fruit that comes what is the fruit it says love joy peace. what peace. peace hallelujah peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control all these fruit but man peace is there so when we need that peace call upon it when we need peace financial peace physical peace future peace trusting peace forgiving peace righteous peace scripture promises that there is peace and so you're not alone and so and the holy spirit wants us to call on him father wants us to have peace if one has peace with God, that's eternal peace, spiritual peace, then one can walk with the peace of God. You can walk with the peace of God because you have the resident peace maker in your life on, in, on board, which brings you that internal peace, that emotional peace. I tell you what, there are people that are in such, such turmoil because, they, man, they got stinking thinking. they got minds that run away with them. And then if you allow your mind to run away with them, I'm telling you what, peace just heads out the back door. And so the biggest battleground, I had a lady phone this week and, and she is totally tormented because she, she got married again and she was told that she's an adulteress, she's never going to go to heaven again and, and all this stuff. And I had to just speak God's promise, His blessing, His goodness, His kindness. And I had to continually speak it and man, she was backwards and forwards. And I had a daily conversation with her. But you have to speak and allow the truth to come up yeah. by Holy Spirit to bring the peace back into your life. Right. We're walking this, this journey with, with D in this cancer situation. We have to talk to ourselves. We have to talk to ourselves. We want to be there to help them and hold them and, and pray with them and cry with them and stand with them and cheer them on. But we have to do it by FaceTime and Facebook and all the other things because we have a pond between us. What do we got to do? We've got to speak to ourselves. When you wake up three o'clock in the morning, your mind is saying, now what? And you've got to speak to yourself. And Holy Spirit comes up. And He comes up. And He just washes you with peace. He says, I've got this, Rod. I've got this. I've got this. It's going to be okay. What does okay look like? I don't know what okay looks like. But I want the peace. Because I tell you what, this peace affects. I tell you what, that's the medical world is making so much money because we don't have the work of the Prince of Peace in our lives. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's causing so much fruit that is just tearing us apart tearing us down man and so the, the biggest yeah here is the biggest battleground you will ever have as a christian here and so we need to say allow the prince of peace to rise up and say hey i've got this i've got this i've got this amen hallelujah Head off the beaten track here to find out where I am on my notes. Okay. Oh, good. 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 I'm out. Yeah. I find myself. I find myself. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, almost went to heaven there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can I talk to you about allowing the third peace to walk in your life? Yes. The peace with others. 
external peace, relational peace. I won't step on anybody's toes today. Or I won't look. I've got to look at John. I preach at John. He says, why do you say that when you and look at me? And I said, I'm, I'm looking at you, but I'm not looking at you because my mind's running 90 miles to the dozen listening to what Holy Spirit wants me to say. So I said to John, John, peace with others, bro. Peace with others, okay? I tell you what, Rod Palmer can struggle through most conflicts. But one of the conflicts I can't get through, and I've got to sort out in a hurry, one is with my father. If he's, he, if he's pressing buttons in my life, I've got to sort it out. The other thing is this person here. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot function if there's conflict here. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot sure. function when there's no conflict yeah. with us. Sure. Yeah. I want to just say when there's conflict in our relationships and we have the, 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 the Prince of Peace come and say, listen, <laughs> I have come and I've placed Holy Spirit on board so that you can walk and present peace and be peacemakers and peacekeepers to the people around you. Why? Because the greater one is on board and allows you to shut your mouth when you're supposed to shut your mouth yeah. and not say what you want to feel like saying. Yeah. And sometimes we want to just, and then, and then and you better zip your lip. That's all you got to do. I'll tell you what, I just reminded when I was thinking of this when Daniel, I think Daniel got more, Daniel if you're watching, he, he got tanned more than most of the, uh, the other two. And Matthew hardly got tanned at all. Okay, you know, the Bible says spare the rod and ruin the child, so we took that literally. We didn't spare the rod. Because every time he got sent to the bathroom, because we send the child to the bathroom, because that's where he gets clean. You don't send him to the bedroom, because that's where his place is, he rests, and he ha that's, his, that's his little habitation. Bathroom is where you get clean. With bad attitudes and all the other stuff. And he would, he would head off to the bathroom and, peace, mom, peace. You know, yeah, peace. Yeah. Always. I think, uh, or you start speaking in tongues. <laughs> you try any trick. But pain is the quickest way to the brain. I don't want to let you know. Pain is the quickest way to the brain. <laughs> and I just said that, you know, just talking about <laughs> peace. Daniel. Daniel's son. Hallelujah. Relational peace with others and eternal peace are in direct proximity of where you are with God. You start stepping back, you start stepping away from time with God, time with Father, time of fellowship with Father. And, and, so, and, and suddenly, you, the peace becomes sparse. Peace becomes something that, and then your internal peace starts heading out, and then you start getting snappy and cranky with people around you, and your external peace goes. It's a function of proximity. When you're with the Father, when you're closely walking with Father, there is peace. Peace. And it's important that you... So when our vertical peace is good, then it, it affects our internal peace and our... And our, and our, and our um, our horizontal peace, our peace with others. So it's, it's important that we, we connect with that. So it's a Bible, it's in James it says, draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. It's a condition. Man, He can't wait. As soon as I turn my face towards the Father, He's there because He loves being with me. And I love being with the Father. And so He says, draw near to me. And so in Romans 12, 18 He says, if, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Be at peace with all men. And, and we as ambassadors of Christ, we are that represent the king in the kingdom. We are the ones that are, are here representing and advancing the king and the kingdom's agenda. We need to be the ones that are the carriers of peace. We need to be the ones that will hold our mouths and not say what we feel like we need to say and, and, and tear people down or just, yes, it's not who's right, it's what's right. right. Yeah. And sometimes holding your mouth is a good thing. <coughs> And here we need to be understanding that residing on you, with you, in you, is Holy Spirit, who is the peacemaker and the peacekeeper. And He will give you wisdom on how to be, be the peacemaker, and He will also give you the wisdom to how to be the peacekeeper. And so, yield to it. Allow Holy Spirit to walk with you, talk with you. And, and I've many times, I, I, running through my mind, I wanted to say certain things, and the Holy Spirit says, no, I don't want you to say that now. I don't want you to say that now. But I said, God, this is great counsel, man. This is good stuff. He says, yeah, but I don't want you to say it. I don't want you to, t I, I don't want you to lambase him with that scripture. No, you don't. Yes, that scripture is true, but it's not for them. Not now. You'll hurt them. Mm -hmm. allow, your Holy, allow, allow your Holy Spirit to be the, be the, be the, the, be the one that ushers the, you, the, the right peace. You've got to be the conduit of what Holy Spirit says. Psalm 130, 133, 133, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is 
when the brethren dwell in unity. It goes on in verse 3, it says, For there the Lord has commanded the blessings life forevermore. When a lack of peace in the marriage and friends and families and work colleagues uh, uh, and, 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 and across political divides, I tell you what, when there is a lack of peace, um, we are the ones that need to go in there and umpire peace and allow our, make sure our words are ones that would be led by Holy Spirit. The message says this in Ephesians 2, 16. I'm going to land this thing now. Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. He brought us together. These are all the different divides. The cross got us to embrace. And has, and that, and that was the end of, of, of the hostility. Christ came and preached peace to the outsider. That was the Gentiles. And peace to the insiders. He treated us as equal. And so made us equal. Through him, Jesus, we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. Incredible conversation of peace there that Holy Spirit has done because Jesus did what he did. He, he, he sorted out the divide. The Prince of Peace in our life means that we're empowered to, to have the, 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 be the peacemakers and the peacekeepers. We're empowered. God's not trying to get you to do something that you can't do. If you would yield to Holy Spirit, the peace, peace, the, the, the peace that's on board, He will help you. Sadly, since Val and I have arrived in this, in this country, the, the, the color, the culture, and the class, and the character divide that's happened and grown is sad. Yeah. And I think it's time for us to declare peace. Yeah. It's time for us to declare peace. I mean, you, you, get, you, you get into this whole thing of listening to the media and you mm -hmm. come off there and you carry on spinning that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not peace. Mm -hmm. It's not peace. Let's speak about the peacemaker mm -hmm. and the peacekeeper. And let's talk about the Prince of Peace that came around this season. Mm -hmm. yeah. And believe in Him who will bring peace in this nation. He's, the, he's our source of peace and He will bring peace in this land. Galatians 3.28 says, In Christ's family there can be no division." Into, into Jew and Gentile, slave or free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. That brings peace in itself. Mm. That in itself brings, because the cross is the equalizer, is the great equalizer, because the ground is level at the base of the cross. Hallelujah. And we're all in the same height, same place at the, at the foot of the cross. What did Jesus go through? I mean, he went through rejection. He went through lies being told about. Him. He was mocked. He was spat on. He was hated. He was alone. He, was, he had physical pain, humiliation, even death. And in it, he walked and had the peace of God. Now, if Jesus can do that because of Holy Spirit's empowerment at his baptism, when, 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 when John baptized him and the Holy Spirit came upon him and empowered him, we are in that same place to be able to allow Holy Spirit to permeate through us and walk through us. And, we're, and so we've got to let the peace of God. That's our will involved. Let the peace of God rule in our hearts. And so that we can see that. So how do we do this? Because I want to just minister a little before we close. How do we do this? Philippians is great in telling us this. Philippians 4 verse 6. Don't worry. Don't lose your peace in other words about anything instead pray about everything let god let god tell god your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers if you do this you will experience what god's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand that's what i'm telling you this peace that god is talking about you can't wrap your head around it but man, I can lap it up and I can enjoy it. It's, that's what it's about. More than the mind can, can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts, your heart quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. I tell you what, if you go back and, and go back to the source, God Almighty, 
Say, Holy Spirit, help me. I'm out of peace. You want to know how do you be led by the Spirit? The presence and the absence of peace. You make a decision and you got that scratchy feeling inside there. You know, Holy Spirit is just saying, Hold it. Whoa. And the nice thing is, I can change my mind. Amen. I change my mind and I get peace. I know that I'm on the right track. That's how simple it is. It is not complicated. You don't have to go to university for this. You just need to be led by the Spirit, which is the presence and the absence of peace. Yeah. Easy. And that's what God is saying. And so as we, as we look at, I just want to cover the three areas about our spiritual peace, our internal peace, and our external peace, our relationship peace. I want to just, just look at that. Don't miss next week. Next week, I want to talk to you about the five fears that rob you of your peace. Because we're talking about peace on earth. And I tell you what, it affects every one of us. There's five enemies that, of your peace that I want to talk to you about. But I, th this morning, God wants peace on earth. He wants us to speak it, announce it, pray it, usher it in, communicate it, reflect it, be ambassadors <coughs> for it. Because we're in the season where God announced peace on earth. Peace on earth. And God is wanting us to be that. The Prince of Peace has come. And now we are the agents of peace. We are the agents of peace. Mm -hmm. So we need to step up. Like I always say, there's no plan B. This is it. Plan A. We are the ones. And this is our time. This is our watch. So if we have peace with God, that gives us peace, the peace of God. And when we've got the peace of God, we can have peace with others. And so that's important that we see that today. And we can pray, your kingdom come, your kingdom of peace come, my God. Your will be done on earth. This is a piece of earth. Remember in Genesis, he took, took earth, formed it, and breathed into it. So we're a piece of mud, okay? Here, on this earth, I want peace. In this temple, this body, as it is in heaven. That's what I want. I want to be able to walk at. And God says, Holy Spirit, say it. He's on board, ready to walk that out and through with you. So many times I talk about we're the vessels through which divine favor flows. Well, we're the vessels through which peace flows, mm -hmm. bringing peace to all the lives that we're in touch with. So we need to be the agents of peace. And God is looking at that today. Amen. Amen. Musicians, can I have you up here? And we're going to pray a bit. I want to just pray uh, for some, some, some needs in the, in the house, some things that God really wants to bring peace in. He wouldn't allow us to preach a word like this and not want the Holy Spirit to do what He, what he, what, what he wants right now. And so this, I know, just as a pastor, I know of situations with, where peace has left the house. Peace is not in, has left the, the residence. And God is saying, I want you to have the peace back in your life. I want you to have the peace back in your life. Some have no peace because they haven't received the God of peace. Yeah. They have no spiritual peace because the very thing that I didn't experience, I had not sorted my issues out with God. And it's very simple. You can't make it right with God. God has made it right with you. But you have to respond to it. So today, by inviting Jesus... As Lord and Savior, as the one who leads, the one who paid for your sins, who made the uh, payment for, uh, picked up the tab. He's available. He's available to bring peace to your life today. But you have to invite him on board. You have to invite him into the house. People come to my home and I, they stand at the door and I invite them in. Your body needs to invite God in. He, he's a gentleman. He just doesn't bombard and push his way in. No, he gets but comes in by invitation. So today, Holy Spirit is really prompting you, saying you really need the Prince of Peace on board. You need to invite him in. That's what brings spiritual peace. Yes. And so I want to pray for you if that's you. If you haven't, if you're listening by, by uh, with uh, on fa FaceTime, whatever you call it, <laughs> myface.com, whatever it is, I just want to tell you invite Jesus in today, not tomorrow, not later on, today. And come by invitation. That's the very first thing. Peace with God. You need peace with God. So if that's you, would you just...
bow your heads as church you know what you do you pray with me out loud to encourage those that haven't prayed last week star and anthony and michael prayed this prayer and gave their lives to christ the prince of peace came on board hallelujah and so pray this out loud pray it meaning it inviting jesus to come on board say jesus Jesus. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you're the Son of God. And that you died on that cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. Today, Today, I invite you into my life. I invite you into my life. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. To be my leader. To be my leader. To be the forgiver of my sin. To be the forgiver of my sin. And to be my peace. To be my peace. I invite you as Lord. I invite you as Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your head bowed. I just want to see it and see if anybody would acknowledge if you prayed that for the very first time today, inviting the Prince of Peace on your life. Just pop your hand up and down. I just want to see you afterwards. As I spoke to Anthony and Star and them last week, just encourage you. If you have prayed that on and uh, watching us by podcast and that, just 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 email me, text me, communicate with me. I want to just let you know that you've stepped in. You're at the front door and you've been invited in, you're welcomed in, and Holy Spirit has come on board and He wants to walk with you and talk with you and He wants to walk things out and through you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now I want to just talk to you about the, 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 the internal peace. There are people that have turmoil in their life, emotional turmoil. They're, they're taunted by and some of it's lies of the enemy are just are just pounding you. Um, you feel you feel guilty and you feel ashamed and you, you have all these emotional. And God says, <coughs> would, you, would you allow Holy Spirit to minister to that today? Would you allow Holy Spirit to come on board and and course through these areas and just bring healing and bring peace? Some of you have had deep hurts. You've had deep hurts from your father. You've had deep hurts from friends. You've had deep hurts from businesses. You, you have trust issues. And you've lost your peace. And Holy Spirit says, can I, can I, can I come and touch, touch that area? Can I touch that area? And this is what I'll do. I'll deal with the infection of that hurt. And yes, you'll always remember it like you may remember a scar and how you got hurt, but it's not going to hurt anymore. You may remember about the situation or the circumstances, but he says it won't hurt anymore. He doesn't want you to cover it up anymore. He doesn't want you to hide it anymore. He doesn't want you to, to just bear with it. He wants, he wants to heal it today. He wants to get that infection out in that area. He wants to emotionally touch that emotional area. And if that's you, you know who you are. You just have to say, get under your breath, say it however you want to say, Dad, it's me. And this is the area. And if you say that, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Father, you know the hearts of all men and women. Of every child, every boy and every girl. You know all the hurts, all the pain, all the injuries, all the emotional turmoils that are in the sound of my voice right now. But Holy Spirit, I know that you are much, much more than all of that. And so Holy Spirit, would you do your surgery? Would you do your, your ministry? Would you touch like no other human can touch will you touch by the precious hand of God will you touch that area will you cleanse and bring, re remove the infection the memories, the hurt and replace it with your peace I'm asking this Father in Jesus name I'm asking that you would come in pour in the oil and the wine the kind that restores the soul Thank you for that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And finally, as we approach, as we approach Christmas, it's a good time to 
resolve relationship issues, the external side. Let's be the peacemakers. It means you have to pick up the phone. Maybe you have to write a note and bury the hatchet. It may require that. It may require you to have coffee with somebody. And so it doesn't care what, who's right, it's what's right. Let the peace be restored. So Father, in, in this house, in this home, in the sound of my voice, there's people that, because we live in this, this, this crazy world, there are jostling and hassles with relationships. But Father, I thank you that you would, that you would touch the areas, touch the relationships, bring restoration, bring wholeness, bring healing, bring peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Crystal. It's a great thing to have peace with God. And have the peace of God. And walk with peace with others. And it's important that when we come to the season where we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, let's be the ones that are ambassadors of peace. Amen. Let's be the ambassadors of peace. Bury the hatchet. Bury the hatchet. Amen. 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 It's a good day. Amen. Amen. Yay, this is a good start and a kickoff to the, the series. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So come expecting, because I want to touch some areas that, 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 that the God says, I want to deal with these things. I want to sort it out. I want to clean house. I want to, I want to allow the, 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 the Spirit to flow without anything hindering it. And that's what the Father wants to do. So let's, let's come prepared next week. But uh, if there's any other needs in the house, we're going to sing the song, one more song before we close. I'm going to ask Jeremy to close in prayer. We're going to sing, sing one more song. Um, a prayer team will come up and, 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 and pray with you. The Bible says we're too agree touching anything. If, if I touch an area here and you feel you need somebody to stand with you, to help you, to give you that extra push, come, come up here and let us pray for you. Let us pray and ask God to come and restore these things, these turmoil things, and bring peace in the middle of the storm. Let him bring the peace. Now, I mean, Jesus spoke to that storm. He spoke to the wind and the, and the, and the, and the, and the rain and the clouds and the thunder and the lightning and peace came. Let us, let us allow the peace of God to be spoken into your life if that's what's needed. If there's uh, agreement or anything that you believe in God for, come on, let's, the Bible says, come, let's, let's stand together and pray and believe God. Amen. Would you stand with us? And uh, when we've sung the song, I'll let Jeremy come and close us in prayer. God bless you. Have a fantastic week.